What's going on guys, Billy here, and with all of the professional grade drones I've been flying over the past couple of months, like the DJI Inspire 2 and the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, I haven't had much time to fly some of the smaller drones that I own and helped me start my YouTube channel like the DJI Spark. Just the other day, I was cleaning off my gear shelf and I found this sitting at the end. So I figured I'd plug it in, bring it with me for the day, and just have some fun. It is really hard to remember that this thing, the DJI Spark, came out in the spring of 2017. So almost a little bit over two years ago because it is still so good for its size. So with all that said, today I want to take a look at the Spark here in 2019, almost after two years, and see how it stood the test of time. So my first time getting a chance to see the Spark was at its launch event held in Grand Central Station in New York City. It was the first big drone event I'd been to and I was starstruck almost the entire time I was walking around, but nonetheless, it's a great memory that I'll always remember. Now the reason that this drone was making so much noise throughout the industry was because of its size. The design of this palm-sized drone was right on the money, but the one thing that frustrated me and many others is the fixed legs. They couldn't bend, they couldn't fold, and while there is no room for the legs to fix inside of the body, it would have been nice for them to just sit against the exterior to make it not as awkward to store inside of a backpack. We see small drones come out all of the time, don't get me wrong, in fact, some of them are smaller than the Spark, but what makes this drone stand out is the power underneath of the hood. It's the features as well as the internals. The Spark is basically unrivaled in its class. There's not many people trying to challenge the Spark just because it is such a great drone, again, for its price as well as its size. The only one that comes to mind is made by Unique. It is the Mantis Q, and it's a pretty new drone. So again, remember, we're comparing tech that is two years old in the Spark to the brand new Mantis Q, and the Spark is still in the runnings because it is just such a great drone. What I can firmly say is the biggest reason that this drone is still relevant in 2019 is because of the fact that no other drone can offer what the Spark does in its class. You've got Alltel competing with the Mavic Pro line with its Evo, you've got GDU challenging DJI's Mavic Air, and you've got PowerVision's PowerEye in the same class as the Phantom 4 Pro, or at least relatively in the same class but nothing really comes to mind when you think of competitors to the Spark. The specs of this drone are another reason why it's a great buy for the price in 2019. Just to hit a few of the notable specs, we get an advertised flight time of 16 minutes, a maximum speed of 31 miles per hour, and we also get an array of sensors on the bottom and front to avoid obstacles and to aid in hovering. Just to touch on that flight time a little bit more, you're probably never going to hit the advertised 16 minutes. I find myself getting anywhere between like 9 and 12 minutes just because I I fly so aggressively, I fly in sport mode almost all the time, trying to get the fastest shots possible with my Spark. So maybe I'm seeing flight time towards the lower end of the spectrum, but especially coming from the Mavic 2 Pro, which advertises 30 minutes of flight time, I feel like the Spark really isn't in the air for all that long, and I can't get all the shots that I need to. The good thing about all of this is that extra batteries for the Spark only cost $49, so you can buy three of them for like $150, which really isn't all that bad. Also, if you're craving more power, you can also look at the Spark Portable Charging Station, which is easily my favorite drone accessory ever, but it's only viable for the Spark because of its size. You can fit two extra batteries and the Spark itself to recharge and protect your drone. If you're interested in this accessory, I'll leave a link in the top right corner, as well as in the description to the review that I made so you can get some more info. So the specs of the aircraft are definitely up to par in terms of what we would expect from a drone the size of the Spark, especially one that is an entry-level drone that's geared towards beginners, you're getting a lot for your money, and it's a drone that you can grow into that's got a lot of power under the hood, it's got a lot of speed, and will definitely hold you over until you're ready for something a little bit bigger, like a Mavic 2 or maybe a Phantom. Now, in terms of the specs of the camera, we see some things that are familiar, like the 1 by 2 3rd inch sensor that can shoot 12 megapixel photos, but is restricted to 1080p video recording at 30 frames per second. With that said, there are two areas where the Spark is crippled, and I think that DJI I did this on purpose as to not interfere with sales of like the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro. So anyway, the first reason why I think it's crippled is from a video standpoint. You can't shoot at high frame rates and you can't shoot at high resolutions. You don't have 4K and you don't even have 1080p at 60 frames per second. Basically, you've got one recording mode, it's 1080p at 30 frames per second and it is the standard. You're going to be able to shoot some great footage with this drone, but 
it is still crippled and dji definitely did this through software there's definitely room to make this camera better but if you want to do that you're gonna have to go with a larger platform like say the mavic air or the mavic pro if you want that slow motion or high resolution video recording now the other thing that dji crippled is the range and i didn't really speak all that much on this topic because i wanted to wait to go over it right now the advertised maximum range when being controlled with your smartphone is 100 meters or 328 feet and that drastically increases to 2 kilometers or just a little over a mile at 6,000 feet when using a remote controller. Now the good thing about buying this drone right now in 2019 is that you get the remote controller included with the price of the drone but for me when I bought it when it first came out it didn't come with a remote controller I had to buy it separately as part of the fly more kit and if you didn't buy the remote controller separately you had to use your smartphone. I mean, those touchscreen controls are awful. And also the range only being 328 feet. I don't know what you'd expect to do with that. Now, all of my friends, we all had the remote controllers for our Sparks. Really, it was the only way to control the drone because you got more range and was also a little bit more tactile on the thumbs. So right now, two years old, if they did include that remote controller with it, I'd say it might be on the fence, but it really does make it a good value. All right, so I feel like I got a little bit sidetracked there. Back to the range of the drone. The one biggest issue with the range is not that you can only go past a mile, which is great. Don't get me wrong. A mile is a great distance but it's also the interference. It operates over a Wi-Fi transmission signal. It's not like OcuSync or LightBridge like we see with some of the bigger drones like the Mavic and the Phantom. So you're gonna experience a lot of interference, especially me flying here in the city of Philadelphia. I can't fly anymore over a half a mile without having to just return to home because the video feed is so broken up. So that's something you're definitely gonna have to be aware of is that the interference as well as the range is really just not good on the Spark. Now to turn things around for the good, regardless of whether longer range flight is something you like to do or if you just like to stay close by, you are going to get some great photos with this camera. Most of these photos look like they were taken on higher end drones with larger sensors that can shoot in higher megapixels. In fact, some of these photos I put in a blind DJI drone camera test and a lot of people couldn't tell the Spark photos apart from the Phantom 4 Pro photos. Now the resolution of the photos taken on the Spark are 3968 by 2976 which is great for this little camera but you aren't able to take raw dng photos and you can't shoot in a three by two aspect ratio which is kind of a bummer now as for video this too isn't all that bad remember it's capped off at 1080p so it might not look as crispy as usual but for the person buying this drone i don't think that they would need anything more honestly most people probably still shoot in 1080p as it is the standard but i digress an entry-level drone has to have its weaknesses in some areas I just really can't get over that range though. It's something that always drove me crazy about the Spark. For me, I love chasing objects. I love chasing jet skis. I love chasing boats. I love chasing trains. And by the time I just start chasing the object, I like lose signal and it really just kills me every time. All right, so final verdict. Is the Spark worth it right now in 2019? I would say hell yes. It is still a great drone in 2019. It's small. It's powerful for its size. It's got a great camera. It's really everything that any beginner would ever be looking for. And still right now in 2019, two years after, it is great, especially the fact it has like a two axis mechanical gimbal. You get some great footage, you get some great videos. It is gonna be perfect to share your everyday life or everyday events with anybody through social media, like through Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So again, 2019, is this drone worth it? Hell yes. Now, there is one thing that would stop me from buying the Spark, and I wanted to wait until the end to discuss this, and I've kind of voiced my opinion over on like Twitter and Instagram. If you guys want to go ahead and follow me over there, links will be down in the description. But I've been talking about this every once in a while now, I guess, because people have been like, oh, Spark 2, Spark Pro, Spark this, Spark that. I really didn't think they'd update the Spark line just because it's in a good spot. It's entry level, it's restricted to 1080p, it can't go all that fast. So again, if they really implemented any changes, it would then make maybe the Mavic Pro not as worth it because now the Spark can shoot 4K. But it's been two years. I don't think DJI likes to wait any longer than two years. And I would say that a Spark 2, Spark Pro, maybe just a new Spark is on the horizon. So look out for that if you're going to be buying a Spark. If you guys want to get it cheaper than the $399 new price point, you can always check eBay. You can check Facebook. There's a lot of good deals going around. But I'll leave a link down in the description to DJI's website to check it out. Anyway, guys, that about wraps up this video. I'd love to know what you guys think about the spark down in the comments here in 2019. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.